Hi, and welcome back. So the study I'm going to review today looks into a well-known longevity diet, but not the diet as a whole, one specific element of that diet. As life expectancy rises, there's an increasing number of elderly people, many of whom struggle with cognitive decline. However, current treatments for age-related cognitive decline are limited. And so there's been a lot of ongoing research into preventing or delaying the processes of age-related cognitive decline. So dietary interventions seem to be a promising and easy to implement avenue. The authors of this latest study have proposed that the Mediterranean diet has the potential to improve cognition, and it's been reported to reduce the likelihood of suffering from neurodegenerative diseases. One of the key components of the Mediterranean diet is extra virgin olive oil. Previous work has linked frequent olive oil consumption to improvements in cognitive function. It has also been suggested that olive oil consumption can help with the prevention of dementia. In this review, the researchers analyzed clinical trials, cohort studies, and cross-sectional studies to determine the role of olive oil consumption on cognitive functions in people who are over the age of 55. In a randomized controlled trial conducted in Greece, in the Mediterranean, participants who received high phenolic, early harvest, extra virgin olive oil outperformed people who received moderate phenolic extra virgin olive oil and the participants who only received instruction on the Mediterranean diet in almost all of the cognitive tests. Similar results were obtained in a clinical trial performed in Spain. Now, the southern part of Spain is the only part that is in the Mediterranean. In this study, the group that consumed the Mediterranean diet and extra virgin olive oil exhibited superior performance on all cognitive domains that were measured. That's compared to the people who consumed the Mediterranean diet plus nuts or an ordinary low-fat diet. Now, at the end of the six and a half year follow-up period, a mild cognitive impairment was confirmed among 7.8% of the people who ate the Mediterranean diet with the extra virgin olive oil. For the groups eating the Mediterranean diet and just the nuts, it was 11.8%, so slightly up. And for those who ate the low-fat diet, it was 19.3%, suggesting a protective role of olive oil against mild cognitive impairment. Also showing that organizations and individuals who still push low-fat diets may be pushing people towards quicker cognitive decline. And a third a randomized controlled trial was conducted in Italy, also in the Mediterranean. Study groups were given either a plain Mediterranean diet or a Mediterranean diet that was enriched with olive oil for one year. The researchers found improvements in the Alzheimer's disease assessment scales, cognitive subscale, which measures several cognitive abilities, such as memory and language in both study groups. However, they didn't report significant differences in any of the other tests. Now that said, cross-sectional studies did not always agree with the results of the randomized controlled trials. In the one in Greece, the authors used the food frequency questionnaire to evaluate the participants' diets. This analysis didn't find a significant relationship between the consumption of olive oil and cognitive health. And similar results were obtained in a Polish study which used different assessments to measure cognitive functions. And in a study conducted in Morocco, again in the Mediterranean, olive oil was the only dietary component of the Mediterranean diet that showed protection against cognitive impairment. In a study conducted in France this time, participants were divided into three groups. This was based on their olive oil consumption as they reported it in the food frequency questionnaire. None, so no use of olive oil at all, Moderate, where they used it for either dressing or cooking of food. And intensive, where they used it for both dressing and cooking. Cognitive tests indicated that compared to people who didn't consume olive oil, moderate and intensive olive oil consumption lowered the odds of cognitive impairment in verbal fluency and also in visual memory. Now, the food frequency questionnaire also assessed olive oil intake among participants in a Greek cohort study. Cognitive assessments performed after 6 to 13 years of follow-up indicated a non-significant association between the consumption of olive oil and cognitive functioning. However, a study of Spanish adults that assessed diet and cognition with a 6 to 8-year follow-up period concluded 
that participants with low or moderate olive oil consumption demonstrated a larger cognitive decline over the measurement period than those with higher consumption. On the other hand, a study conducted in Germany that followed the participants for over 10 years didn't find any association between higher olive oil consumption and a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease or memory decline. The studies included in the review I'm talking about now varied in their designs, their ways of reporting olive oil intake and the reported outcomes. This prevented the review authors from conducting a meta-analysis or a subgroup analysis. Also, some reported studies lacked data regarding the participants and the intake of different food groups. The authors also mentioned that the food intake data in the cross-sectional study and the cohort studies relied on self-reported intake from the food frequency questionnaire and the authors questioned the reliability of this data. Ironically, this applies especially to elderly people with cognitive impairment who may not be able to precisely remember the food that they ate. The authors were also concerned about the lack of study protocol registration, which they say may result in bias. Additionally, their bias analysis indicated a considerable risk of bias in half of the randomized controlled trials. Considering this, the authors call for, in the future, high quality clinical trials to strengthen the data on olive oil consumption and cognitive impairment. That said, the authors concluded that, despite some discrepancies in the findings, the results of the 11 studies were reasonably consistent. The findings indicated that the consumption of olive oil could increase cognitive performance in almost all the cognitive domains that were measured. Now, epidemiological studies are crucial for understanding public health trends, but they face significant challenges, notably bias and also dishonesty. Bias can stem from various sources, such as selection bias, where the study population doesn't accurately represent the general population, or measurement bias, where errors in data collection end up skewing the results. We also need to think about dishonesty. Whether that is intentional or due to memory lapses, this can lead to inaccurate reporting of behaviours or symptoms, further compromising the reliability of the data. And certain so-called professionals can also cherry-pick the data if they want to push a certain agenda. Another concern is that the current olive oil market is fraught with issues that can mislead, disappoint and affect consumers' health. A primary concern is the prevalence of fake olive oils, which are often cheaper olive oils masquerading as high quality olive oil. This not only cheats the consumer financially, but also deprives them of the health benefits associated with genuine extra virgin olive oil. Blending oils poses a similar problem. This is where olive oil is mixed with inferior oils without clear labeling, compromising both taste and nutritional value. Additionally, the purchasing of rancid olive oil is significant. Rancidity occurs when olive oil is exposed to light, heat or air for prolonged periods of time, leading to a loss of its characteristic flavour and most of its known health benefits. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes. So another study looking at a key element that makes the Mediterranean diet the so-called best for longevity. Many people who believe this also believe that the blue zones also hold the key to longevity. But only two of the blue zones are in the Mediterranean. That's 40%. And remember, the blue zone study is now a standalone study and it was published over 20 years ago. And a question I'd like you to answer in the YouTube comment section, if you would, is that if the Mediterranean diet, and also note that the phrasing is now changed in the zeitgeist, it's now called the Mediterranean style diet. If it is superior, why aren't all the countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea in the blue zone.